Yeah. <laughs> How are you? I'm, I'm fine. Uh, I would like to know, um, could you explain me a little bit about what you are working with? Well, I've been working with water, vitalizing water, mm -hmm. um, following the, the footsteps of Jerry Pollock from the University of Washington. He discovered water's exclusion zone, and uh, H2O transforms to H3O2 in the presence of light, visible light and infrared, and it creates a voltage in water. So I've been doing the same, uh, and going a little further, I vitalize the water uh, to get a higher voltage. I vitalize it using shungite. <laughs> uh, it's a mineral from Russia. So a combination of shungite and vortexing and magnets, so magnetization, increases the ability for the exclusion zone to form, which translates as a higher voltage. And the exclusion zone, could you just explain that? Because not everybody will understand. Oh yeah, sorry. So, um, okay, so when H2O interacts with light, it, it transforms to H3O2. And if, so it forms layers of uh, hexagonal layers, many, many thousands of layers on an atomic level. But the reason Jerry calls it exclusion zone is because it excludes all particles, meaning whatever is in H2O, including salt, like ocean water, and, and you name it, the H3O2 pushes it away. So inside the H3O2 layer, or the exclusion zone layer, is nothing but pure water, negative charge. So you could actually purify all, all this, the, our drinking water by creating this exclusion zone? Yes, yes you could, if you can separate the H3O2 from the H2O, which I have done. You have done that? Jerry has done that, Jerry Pollock has done that. I mean, I'm doing it on a small scale, but, but yes, it's definitely possible to obtain a voltage from this, so energy, as well as filtered water. I'm working with plants in, in, in trying to quantify vitalized water. The higher voltage is one thing. Another way I'm doing it is uh, uh, feeding plants water, ve vegetables. I feed, so I, I typically do three types of experiments, uh, control water, vitalized water, and microwave exposed water, or EMF, they, people call it EMF, electromagnetic fields. So every test I've done so far, the vitalized water shows a much higher yield in biomass and plant size. And I continue to refine the vitalization process. Mm -hmm. So every harvest becomes bigger and better. <laughs> And conversely, the, um, the EMF exposed water, those plants are very small, depending, it is direct correlation between the exposure time to EMF and the plant, the plant, the effects on the plant, the biomass. Uh, at a light exposure, like what I mean by that is maybe three to five hours a, a day of, let's say, a, a water sitting next to a wireless router or a baby monitor. The plants are, let's, they're, they're about 20% decrease in biomass compared to the control plants. And the voltage is maybe 40% decrease. But if I put the water If I expose the water to the wireless router or a baby monitor for 24 hours a day, maybe maybe 10 days, the voltage drops to zero. And and the plants uh, will die in three, die. Or, three or four weeks. So it is the electricity inside the water. It's the charging, actually, that gives life. Yes. 
Yes, plants have cells, just like human bo- human bodies. They each in the human body, mm-hmm. there's there's approximately two point five quadrillion water molecules in every cell. So if they're denied the ability to create an exclusion zone or, or, or diminished, bioelectricity is decreased significantly. So, you know, the EMF, the pervasive nature of EMF, it, it's, it's just getting more powerful, uh, more intense, more pervasive. I think it's very drastically affecting uh, people's health. And in my opinion, there's no coincidence, you know, the correlation between in the early 80s, <clears throat> uh, autism and cancer and behavioral issues increased dramatically. Well, in 82 was the first commercially available cell phone. It only took, I, I, I want to, I think it's a dozen years or so for 100% uh, this, uh, market saturation. Everybody had a cell phone in, in, you know, by the 90s, mid 90s or something like that. So just every generation becomes more disconnected, more disconnected from their true nature, I think, because uh, a lot of the reason, not all of the reason, but a, a big reason is because of our body's inability to create a healthy exclusion zone. Right now, I have a headache yeah, I know. from from EMF. So I'm very motivated to uh, uncover this and, and maybe find ways to mitigate. So uh, what do you think about that? In Europe and especially also in Denmark, they have decided now we should have the 5G. Horrible. Because we, we feel, uh, you know, powerless. It's horrible. But no one knows about this, but I think the I think the correlation between exclusion zone degradation and EMF is a, is a important beginning. Also, Li-Fi technology. So Wi-Fi uses the lower band microwave frequency, which I'm showing is is degrading the exclusion zone. Li-Fi uses light, visible light. Li-Fi? Li-Fi. I didn't know that. Yeah. So it's uh, new. It's a new technology. And it's oddly enough, it's a <laughs> it's a it's about a hundred times faster than Wi-Fi. But mo- more importantly, it uses the visible light frequency. That's the that's the the spec the the, the spectrum of the electromagnetic spectrum, visible light and infrared, but that light frequency, Jerry Pollock discovered, creates the exclusion zone. So, technically speaking, by using your cell phone, you'll become healthier if it's on the Li-Fi signal. So could we change that to that? Yes, we could. It would be faster and it would be healthier. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So Li-Fi is better. Well, in my opinion, it's... Ha- It's not proven uh, that that frequency, they, they modulate the frequency, you know, and it's pulsed. Uh, so there's more research that needs to be done if, in fact, it keeps a healthy exclusion zone. But I'm just saying, theoretically, it's very promising. Now, convincing telecom, that's another that's another discussion, but because they got to change their frequency bands, you know. But I'm just saying from a... From a frequency, scientific perspective, technically speaking, this would probably be the way to go. Oh. Do you think that sound, now I work with the sound, do you think sound can can help us in this situation? Yes, very yeah. much, very much. As we were talking uh, yesterday, so visible light is about an octave. The frequency range is about one octave from red to violet, you know, the rainbow colors. Interestingly, the diatonic scale, musical scale, is one one octave, 40 octaves down from visible light. So those same, the same ratios that apply to consonant chords apply to the primary colors. So a chord equals color. And... 
I'm pretty convinced, I haven't done the test myself, but I am quite convinced that with the right sonic frequencies, in particular consonant chords, will create an exclusion zone. It's like... Oh, it's consonant what? chords, what's that? Consonant versus dissonant. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's interference or... What did you say? In 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 interference, consonant, I just didn't understand it totally. Like a chord that sounds good or pleasing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also harm harmonious. Harmony. Harmon harmonious. Yeah, harmonious. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Discordant versus... Yeah. Um, so I do think that the right chords, individual notes or sounds, but also chords, I think more has more potential to create an exclusion zone in water, which translates to health. So it's, it's, it's one way to quantify uh, vibrational healing. So it's the fifths usually coming, like if I would sound heal, you know, more notes will come because you will have the note you find and then the overtones and undertones will also appear when we find the right resonance. So it will usually be the fifths and uh, the third and the fourth, which are a part of the harmonious system. So I think it's in the music of the spheres, this is built in. Actually, yes. It, I mean, I'm not a musician, no, so. No, no, no. But I do understand the basics. I think you're absolutely correct. Okay. I think it's really interesting your work, and uh, I wish you good luck with it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And is there any place people can contact you or um, see the web page or something? Well, my web page, which is a website which is out of date, yes. <laughs> is uh, Dunedain enterprises.com okay want me to spell that no i i will i will put it on the film oh and my email thank you your email my email is uh, lpm dot uh, at gmail.com thank you very much uh, len for sharing all this thank you very much thank you